when you download Beersmith, you're going to notice that there are a ton of different options, and that can make it seem kind of intimidating, but no fear. I'm here to make it feel more simple for you. The first thing you have to do is set up equipment profiles. Uh, for most people, that's probably just going to be one profile, a five-gallon uh, five batch volume profile. So the way you're going to do that is select profiles down here, or you can go up here and select profiles, and then click equipment. You're not going to see the stuff that you see here. These are all of my equipment profiles. I have multiple ones because I do a lot of different types of brewing. And they're, they're so easy to set up, I figured why not. You're probably going to see stuff that looks like this. What I recommend, rather than using the equipment wizard, which is what Brad does in the videos on uh, his website, the Beersmith website, is select whichever one of these sounds the closest to yours and copy and paste it. Control C, Control V. Now you got two of them. Now you can fuck around with one and not worry about uh, you know screwing up the original one. They're easy enough to fix, but so I'm going to delete that. So what I'm going to do is open up my equipment profile and kind of walk you through uh, how I set mine up. I think you'll notice how simple this is. So first thing you want to do is name your profile. I'm I'm. Uh, uber organized and so I, I like to start with a number so that it stays at the top of the list. This is the one I use the most, my five gallon ale. After hundreds of batches I know that my brew house efficiency is 75 percent when I'm using mostly ale. You'll notice I've got a five gallon a five gallon lager profile as well. I get about two to three percent better efficiency when I'm using mostly pill small. So all I did is I Use the same profile, copy and pasted it, named it something different, and put 76% or 77% efficiency. It's the only difference. Hop utilization factor, keep it exactly where it's at. 100%. You'll notice right here it says mash ton specific heat. This we're going to use doo -doo 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 -doo, right here. Depending on whatever you're using for your mash ton, you want to set this to whatever Brad recommends. He's the genius behind this program, so I just trust him. I've never had an issue uh, because of this. So since I use a Coleman Extreme Cooler, if you're using a, you know, a, a beverage cooler of some sort or whatever, you're gonna plug in 0.3 over here. Somebody emailed me. Okay, mash ton volume, you should know this. Uh, I use a 70 quart cooler. 70 divided by four is 17.5. Just do the math, depending on whatever your mash ton volume is. Mash ton weight, that's simple enough. People have asked me how I know the weight of it, uh, because mash tons can be kind of cumbersome and, and weird shaped. I shamefully stepped on a scale, and then I picked up my mash ton and calculated the difference, and that difference is what I plugged into here. Louder ton dead space. This is going to be one of those things that is different uh, for batch and fly spargers versus uh, brew in a bag folks. Uh, if you're doing brew in a bag, go ahead and set this to zero gallons because there's no dead space in your mash ton. That's going to get calculated down here in this area. Uh, what I found is that I lose about an eighth of a gallon to the dead space in my cooler. If you want to be a little bit more liberal with that, go ahead and put a quarter gallon or up to half gallon. It doesn't matter. You're just going to end up using a little bit more water on your brew day. Make sure that adjust mash volume for dead space is in there. It's going to bump up the, uh, the amount of strike water and if you're doing sparges, sparge water that you use so that you can get your volumes spot on. Okay, down here in the boiler section, top up water for kettle, just keep it at zero. If you're doing all grain, you're not topping off, I, I, I don't think. If you are topping off, I'd suggest just doing smaller batches and doing full, full volume boils. Make sure that calculate boil volume automatically is selected and then leave this alone. It's going to get automatically calculated. For ale, I do 60 minute boils. I don't care what people say. <laughs> in my logger, over here in my logger profile, that is set to 90 minutes. Now boil off rate. This is one that stumps a lot of people. Um, I know that throughout the year, my boil off rate is right about, right about 1.15 gallons uh, per hour. Now, how did I determine that? The best way to do it that I found is to 
get a certain volume of water, say two gallons, that's what I used, put it in the kettle that you boil in, get, bring it up to a boil, start a timer for 15 minutes, let it boil for a full 15 minutes. As soon as that timer goes off, you cut the heat, put a top on, the, on your kettle, and let it chill down for a minute. Let, or get it get down to about room temp and then measure how much volume is in there. The difference is your boil off rate for 15 minutes. Multiply that number by four and that's your hourly boil off rate. Always have this checked. That way if you end up bumping this up later on while you're designing a recipe, uh, it's going to calculate how much it's going to calculate your boil off based on the hourly rate and not just assume that you're going to boil off, you know, a gallon every 90 minutes as well or whatever it is. So just keep that checked. Trust me. All of this stuff is going to be plugged in for you. Make sure that cooling shrinkage remains at 4%. And we'll move over here to the fermenter and bottled and volumes. One thing to keep in mind about boil off rate that I wanted to point out is that this is hugely contingent on humidity. So uh, the... The more humid it is, let's see, the less you're going to boil off. So if you have really, really humid weather during one season and really dry, it's really dry out in other seasons, you might want to do multiple boil off rates and then you can just make different equipment profiles based on the season. But if you're, if you're having different boil off rates because of the weather, that's something to keep in mind. It stays pretty dry where I live, so I keep it there all year long. Okay, lost to Trube and Chiller. I have it set at a half gallon. This is the stuff that remains at the bottom of the kettle after you rack into your carboy or your bucket. I know that after the Trube experiment, I've been tempted to knock this thing down to zero, but eh, it's what I'm used to, so I, I'm going to keep it there. I, I'm pretty liberal with that number as well. You, you'd probably get away with doing 0.25 gallons, but I've got the room. Top of water, again, that's zero gallons. Batch volume. A lot of people think, oh, I thought you were doing a five-gallon batch, whatever. No, this, the batch volume is um, how much I'm pushing into my carboys, including the amount I'm going to leave behind on top of the trube that's at the bottom of the fermenter. Now, I leave about a half gallon. The reason I do that is I, I want clear beer getting racked over to my kegs. I don't, want, I don't like to put the tip of my... Uh, siphon all the way down into the yeast. I started in the middle of the carboy and slowly lower it until I fill up my keg and I just dump whatever's in there. Beer gods. And you'll see right here that the bottling volume, it should be called packaging volume in my opinion, is exactly five gallons. If you lower the fermenter loss or your batch volume, let's say you put five, you'll notice, and you're losing a half gallon obviously to your fermenter, then you'll notice that your packaging volume is four and a half. So just bump this up a little bit, you know, spend the extra 12 cents on grain and, and make yourself a full five gallon batch. Well, that's my thinking. Okay, so once you get your whole equipment profile set up and plugged in there, you're going to click OK, but we're not done yet. So now what you want to do is set that profile as your default so that when you open Beersmith later on, you can just come in and start designing a recipe and it's already defaulting to uh, your equipment profile. The way you do that is go to Beersmith preferences and you'll see this bad boy open up and right here you can set all that up for yourself this is what gets plugged in if you print off labels and stuff like that in equipment profile you're going to select that click the profile that you just created and select OK so now when you go in to design a new recipe add recipe you'll see that the equipment now is set to the profile that you just created and it's going to calculate your original gravity and bitterness units and all that fun stuff based on uh, your specific equipment. So the next video is going to be about mash profile setup which in my opinion is probably more important in terms of uh, honing in on your own numbers uh, than the equipment profile. Cheers. Mm -hmm.